We can just talk about stuff and shit. It doesn't have to be. Let's an talk about stuff and shit. We're recording yeah. already, obviously, so we can start off with that. That's it. Let's talk about stuff and shit. <laughs> we'll start off with stuff. If we've got time, we might move on to shit. Because, uh, yeah, we would have to give a PG warning for that. Anyway, when are you going to stop collecting weapons? Well, um, I don't collect them. <laughs> it's, it's like I it's, beg it's to the, differ. It's for the job. It's for the job. Like a film calls me up and says, "We need a such and such." So. Um, I uh, get them the such and such, and then the such and such goes on the wall. So you only so how many how many weapons have you got? You you know how many, don't you? Oh God, no, I don't. Um, fifty. That's probably about yeah, probably probably fifty sixty. Yeah, those are just the ones on the wall. Well, what else you got? <laughs> there's this whole, there's oh, whole room got next. A, oh, you got whole room next door. Yeah, there's um, there's a bag of G thirty sixes over there. You've got um. Am I right in saying you have your own range? No, we don't have our own. We use a range called the Tunnel Target Sports Centre yeah. down in Dorset, uh, on the border of Devon and Dorset near Axminster, near Lyme Regis. Really good range, um, run by a guy called Richard, owned by a guy called Richard. Uh, yeah, that's where we... Indoor range. We, yeah, indoor range, yeah. It's got three ranges. Um, one's 100 metres. Yeah. And you can fire up to 50 cal on it. What about the other two? Uh, <laughs> 20, We've got three ranges, 20, one's 100 metres, <laughs> and the others. 25, <laughs> 25 metres and a 35. Did upstairs. you ever shoot a Bisley? I have shot a Bisley once. Oh, yeah, yeah I've, got, um, I've got an Accuracy International um, that we use on the course uh, when we train actors. And uh, I, I got sad because it only, get, it only ever gets used on the 100. So it's a bit like having a having a really nice sports car and never ever taking it what, out. What what AI is it? What? Uh it's a three oh eight. Ah so it's um it's a it's a modern day version of the L ninety six. Yeah. And um it only got fired on the hundred and I was like, I've got to change this. So I, I took it to be busy. You mean it's an old version of the L ninety six? No, it's a more modern version of Oh is it? Yeah. Oh right, right, okay. Yeah it's a um it's what the police have been using. Um it's if you looked at it you'd know you know it's yeah, actually yeah. international bolt looks the same same bolt handle um so I took that to busy uh for a run out and took it on i can't remember the name of the range but it's one that's a thousand meters i can't remember the name of the, that's the main range isn't yeah, it? yeah the big one so how to how to go on that it's quite fun yeah you see some right spotters down there <laughs> I need a spotter. Yeah, I need a spotter. <laughs> I spotted us down there. Some fond memories. Mm. Fond memories of not hitting the target. How are you learning down there? I think that range went up to twelve hundred meters, thirteen hundred meters. I think did it not? Yeah, I, I think. think there's. I think there's. We were at a further forward firing point. I think there was a, a further back one. How did you become a sniper? Did you get selected for it because you were a good shot, or did you just choose? Um, no, it doesn't work like that. Uh, it doesn't work like, oh, well, talking shit. You asked a few things there. So when I was when I was I don't know how it works now. When I was in, it would be kind of on inv- upon invitation mm. to the sniper platoon, the three para. But it'd be a combination of things upon invitation, and also or or yeah, they'd have a, they'd need to have a gap in the platoon, looking for people, and you would need to come recommended or referred. Got it. Or referred. Yeah. And then you go on the you go on the sniper selection course because when I teach people about snipers in films and how snipers in films are usually doing things completely wrong because they're hanging out of a window or <laughs> something like that. Yeah, it's I, a problem though, isn't it? Well, yeah, you know, it's the problem with yeah. filming. It's like yeah. I I sort of my first first hand experience of that was um, on the oh shit slow horses set. Mm. Where I was in, we were doing this, ta- this this scene. It was tactical. You know, SWAT that, guys. Does that come out now? The first series. No, you're the one that you're in. Yeah, I was in the first two series. Oh, you in the first two? I yeah. thought you were in the third one. Sorry, the yeah. first two. Only as an extra on and off. Yeah. Most of the time, I'm, I'm in black kit. I'm mm. barely on camera. But um, there was a scene there. We're coming out of the vehicles. I'm I'm one of the SWAT team members. Come out and of course I saw it and I sent you a picture of yourself. Yeah, you did see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, going to the doorway, and we, when we were doing the, when we were rehearsing the shot, 
I would get I was like first out first at the doorway and the director loved the way I was doing things because I know how to do things and fucking you know so a lot of the guys who were doing who were the extras for that work with the SWAT teams now they were civvies they were clue so he loved he loved the way I was doing things but what he would he would end up changing it so it wasn't quite right so I was more on camera which normally meant more exposed than I would be if it was a real situation that well, always felt bad to me because I think if any of the blokes are watching this and seeing this fire position they were like this is not the way I would do this well that's the problem is 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 getting into a good fire position means cover and cover's not yeah. good for film because you can't be seen so anything to do with cover is like no get out of cover so we can see you yeah um, yeah classic yeah. Uh, I did enjoy that. that that scene actually was quite funny because we were there was a a house we were filming on a street in London, and the house we were filming in the evening. It was a night. It was nighttime shot, mm. and the house had been obviously hired by the the film company, the production company. And in that shot, part one was get to the door outside, and then part two of the scene was inside the house. So then they filmed it for inside, and it's as sweeping through the house, in, which in reality was just sweeping through the hallway. And then up the stairs, but only partly up the stairs because it was all curtained off. Mm. The hallway is curtained off at the back, so you can only go in the center. You have to go past that, and the, and the same with the stairs. Don't go up past that. And when this when they cut, we just loiter in the hallway. <laughs> right. Well, when we went to do this, the full scene, the actual take the first uh, the first um, what do you call it? Take the first recording. The um, take do the. God's sake! Do the first take. <laughs> take the first. They take. changed it slightly. The directors changed it slightly. Mm. So he wanted, he wanted more of us coming in. So I was first in through the door. Second person in through the door. Third person just going to the doorway. And he said, "Right for the for the take. When we change it, I want you all to go straight through into the house. As in, you all get inside, so it looks like you're, you know, just for, for it just looks better." Well, the third guy didn't realise that we weren't supposed to go beyond the curtains. <laughs> So he still has one man so clearance drills. He does have one man clearance. Exactly what he did in this take. He got burst out of the vehicles. Yes. It's quite. It was quite an adrenaline pump thing because the start of it was we're in vehicles and we're rushing up to the down, rushing down the street, three three or four vehicle convoy at speed, brake slam on. We're out the doors and like you know out the doors and fly into the front door because there's, there's a threat there. I mean we're gonna we're gonna um, we're gonna breach the place and we get the front door in burst through the front door I go straight and I stop like I'll be doing it. inside the door off camera stop second guy comes in he comes in stops next to me like we were doing third guy who didn't know what we'd gone on whoo, straight through the house through the curtain to where Mr and Mrs old people who house it is are sitting there having a cup of tea <laughs> and he's going the I see him and he's going around clearing Get he on the thinks floor. they're part of the scene no yeah they're sitting there going what the fuck I'm looking at him going, what the fuck Get and, then, on the floor. and then it's outside it's like cut and I'm like <laughs> I can't, it was actually a military guy who did that. He was still serving at the time. Um, he's out. Did now. he start handcuffing them? Yeah, and- no, 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 no. <laughs> but he, he kind of, as he's sweeping through and sweeping the kitchen, mm. he's kind of realizing, oh, this isn't great. He's sort of realizing, there's no cameras in here. I know there's no cameras in here. There's two people in here, like, what the fuck is going on? And there's a curtain. Why was there a curtain in the middle of the hallway? Very funny. That was good. Yeah, they took it in good jest. It was good to get in good jest. But that was a. Uh, that whole shooting in London with pretty much the entire all the shoots I did for that se- mm. for those series were in London almost all of them it exposed me to how where all the money goes in film production it's things like that mm. hiring you know hiring streets renting streets closing down streets in London for for what is going to be a two or three minute scene in the end production yeah. which takes hours hiring a, the full a full terminal in Stansted mm. a full terminal in Stansted to do a scene that's going to last three or four minutes yeah. and you're hiring the full terminal to shut yeah. it all down so some so some production company, company can come in there was 200 extras when we did that as well because you was needed that, the terminal full of people yeah, who were flying around I did a similar thing was that filmed during lockdown? yes towards the tail end yeah, yeah. we um, something I, I can't remember what it was but we filmed in Gatwick <laughs> during lockdown as well and that was that was probably the only time you could do that because it was completely empty yeah we were on the pan filming there yeah. they even they wouldn't there needed to be a scene out just outside the the airplane and inside yeah. they hired a fucking plane yeah. with the air hostesses with the pilot they were puckered gen air hostesses and pilots so in there sat in there and when we weren't when the when we were waiting that scene we were, we were sat in the seats in the plane getting food getting the snacks and that from the air so having a jolly with the, the pilots and that and they, they literally flown there and they, they were being paid mm. to 
be people on camera if they need to be for a film. Now, dare I say, it all depends on who the parent company is Mm. because I do a lot of work for the BBC and the BBC, because they're publicly funded, have nowhere near the same budget that maybe Apple would or Prime would. So when they spend money, they are very, very good at getting the maximum amount out of something. Mm. And they're very good at not spending something, not spending a lot of money on something that's not going to really show up. Whereas whereas Apple are newer to this. And so Apple have got a lot of spare cash because their main source of income is nothing to do with film and TV. It's uh, your phones, your iPads and everything else. So they put a lot more money into it, but it doesn't necessarily, depending on the production, doesn't always get seen. But but does that does mean though, correct me if I'm wrong, that they generally have higher quality productions, don't they? Because if you think of yes, but it wouldn't mean that double the budget means that it's doubly good. No, but I think it would close the door on the risk of people going batshit crazy, for example, over some factually incorrect thing, piece of clothing, or procedure, or something like that on a British production because they um, haven't they haven't bothered yeah. paying for <clears throat> money for a. I don't know, on-set military advisor, yes, for example. Yes, for instance. Uh, yeah, it, generally when you've got more budget, you've got more people, mm. um, but more budget doesn't necessarily make it easier because you're dealing with bigger problems. So, um, yeah, it's... it's it's I, I like it when you have choices to make, when you've got problems to solve, and those problems are not solved by... You can't solve them by cash because you just don't have the budget. You've got to be creative. There's a, there, 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 are, there are cleverer solutions than Kajaki's just... Kajaki's a good example of that, hey, actually. Kajaki, Kajaki's a good example of yeah. that, actually. Can we talk about that? Because I love that film. You can do. You can talk about it if you want. <laughs> I mean, I'm just thinking, they CGI'd the Chinooks. Yes. CGI'd the Chinooks. Yeah. The, the Black Hawks that came in, which were American Black Hawks coming in to rescue the guys. Mm. They were actually Jordanian Black Hawks with Jordanians. So filmed it in Jordan. Filmed in Jordan. Yeah. Uh, there wasn't some minor else. invasion where, where what, you were. Yeah. Yeah. I think what else was, was uh, budget on that. But then that that's a really good example of making the most of your budget. The cast. Mm. I they wouldn't mind me saying this. The, ca- the cast were arguably for something like that were not A-listers at the mm. time. But a lot of risk taken with the cast. Yeah. And they were fucking brilliant, mate. Yeah. Really, really good. Really good. Really good cast. Really good. In fact, Scott, Scott Kyle, who's, who plays Stuart Pearce, and he's down here later this... No, it's in May. He's down here in May on a stage production. Wasn't he... Something. Was he the chap who you've had on the podcast who was in Ghost... Uh, 222, A Ghost Story. Was that him? No, that's uh, Grant Kilburn. That's Grant Kilburn. Two twenty two ghost story. Yeah. That's Grant Kilburn. Yeah, I spoke to him two days ago actually. He's in London at the minute. Mm. Yeah. The um the budget interesting enough, the budget that you that gets set aside for a production, if it's a film or it's something like a Netflix show, a lot of it will go on so the the, the actual budget of the the show, you'll then sometimes if it's a big film paying all of that again in advertising and marketing. So if you have a £200 million... You have a production budget and then a marketing budget. Yeah, you've budget. got your £200 yeah. million pound film. Yeah. You then might have another £100, £160 million pounds on the marketing. So your film has got to make double what it costs to make to cover its costs. So you often find these huge budget films that never make back what they, <coughs> what they cost to make, let alone what they cost to market. So there's numerous, it's getting more and more numerous high budget flops. Mm. Which makes sense. Have you ever seen Battlefield Earth? <laughs> the John Travolta one? No. Oh <laughs> my God. <laughs> no, but I know about it. I know, I know about it. No, I've I've heard it mentioned it. so many times. <clears throat> that it's yeah. an intentional comedy. And uh, I downloaded it completely just recently. About a year, <laughs> about a year ago, maybe less. Yeah. I watched mm. it. My, I mean, it is only watchable because it's so terrible. There is a market for films like that. There's a film called um, The Room. Have you ever heard of it? No. 
So <laughs> The Room is a very significant film. The Room. Culturally, yeah. Not ro- there, there was a film a couple of years ago called Room, mm. which was Brie Larson, which she won an, an Oscar for. Not that. Okay. So The Room is a must watch for anybody who's going to make their own films because it is a it is a perfect example of how not to make a film. Why? Why? <laughs> yeah. I need to watch it, this it's film. So, it's so good. So there's, um, the, they, they made a film about the making of The Room Amazing. called The Disaster Artist <laughs> with, James, with James Franco and his brother, who's also called Franco, but I can't remember his first name. Um, so The, the, the Room w- is an early noughties film, uh, sort of, I think it's 2005. And it was written, directed, produced and starring, which is always a warning sign when you've got somebody doing all of those jobs by a guy called Tommy Wiseau. And Tommy Wiseau's background is very interesting in the fact that it's a, nobody knows where he came from, um, but he's got a very thick accent. Um, and he, What accent is it? I mean, Eastern European, maybe. Okay. It's difficult to tell. The it's flag, very. The flags are flying <clears throat> up here. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it, it was part of the mystery and the intrigue about it is where the hell he came from. And he's never told anybody his backstory. But somehow he got a lot of money. And again, the money, the amount is somewhere in the low millions. So somewhere about five or six, somewhere like that. But. The rumours are that he got it from a very rich old lady that died and gave him the cash. Uh, rumours are that he got it selling jeans. You know, there's the, again, the, the story behind the story is even more interesting than the, than the film. So the film is, um, from start to end, is dreadful. What's it about? <laughs> it's about a man... Um, played by Tommy Wiseau. And I can't remember what the guy's called. It may even be Tommy. Is it Tommy? I can't remember. It's not. It's not. But it's it's about him um, and his relationship with his girlfriend and his job. And it's all about a man who's misunderstood and uh, everybody takes advantage of him and he ends up shooting himself. Spoiler warning. But <laughs> it, is, <laughs> it, is, it is... The dialogue is abysmal. Um, the way it's shot is abysmal. Um, so you need to see the room first and then go and see the disaster artist afterwards. So um, unfortunately, the room is now very hard to go and see because when I saw it, it was available on YouTube for free. Um, but it's now become so popular because it's so bad that the only way to watch it is to buy the DVD of it. Or, this may have changed, but in the last few years, the only way to watch it was to buy the DVD of it. Or Pirate or there may Allegedly. be other sources. But there's a, there's a great cinema. There may be other sources. There may be other sources. <laughs> there's a great independent cinema called the Prince Charles, which is... I've been a, there. Kajaki been premiere. Of course, there. Kajaki was there, yeah. yeah. So, um... Uh, oh, Kajaki in premiere there. No, we had yeah. the the one I went to watch. It was, Kajaki, went, Kajaki got screened at the Prince Charles for the Veterans for Peace did. Association. That's when yeah, I went. That's, that's right, when yeah. I saw yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so the Prince Charles uh, regularly plays it. And Tommy the Wiseau, room. the room, and Tommy Wiseau regularly comes over from the states wow. to do a Q and A. And have you ever been to see? Have you ever like it's become a cult film like the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Mm. In the fact that there are various things that the audience join in with. For some reason, um, um, the the main set of this of this film is his apartment, and there are pictures around the apartment that are clearly stock picture frames that they've just got from somewhere with you know you know fake pictures in and the pictures of spoons right <laughs> spoons. spoons so every time every time a picture of a spoon <coughs> pops up the audience throw these pl- plastic spoons as at the screen uh, <laughs> um every time there's a continuity mistake the audience shout it out um there's some there's some absolutely classic lines but the Prince Charles puts it on um, and Tommy Wiseau comes. So if you do get the chance, go and see it at the Prince Charles. But I warn you, everyone, most of the people that are there have already seen it numerous times yeah. and will get involved. But it's it's absolutely that brilliant. That sounds good. But there are things like, um, there are characters that come in um, 
midway through don't add anything to the plot and you never ever see them again um there is the sets are bizarre because they filmed all the sets in a studio they rented a studio and rather than rather so one of the sets is in an alleyway so rather than film in an alleyway which would have been ridiculously cheap they built an entire alleyway in the studio must have been more expensive well, no, it's not. This is the thing. Um, so the disaster artist, the film about the making of it, this is one of the things they pick up. And it's like, we've got a perfectly good alleyway literally out the door. Why have we built this in here? And it's all about, this is what he thinks Hollywood is. This is what he thinks movies are. Ah. So um, there's another scene, a few scenes that happen on top of a building on a rooftop. And um, again, they green screened it and built oh, God. built this rooftop in the studio because that's what big Hollywood productions do. Uh, it, and so it's a masterclass of, of how not to make a film and you can learn so much from it mm. because it's like, that's wrong, that's weird, why is this all so wrong and weird, here's why. There are two sex scenes in the first quarter of an hour um, which some of the footage is repeated from one into the second one. <laughs> um, and, <laughs> and one of the things that people constantly point out is the positioning of the two the two actors mm. doesn't make sense oh. sort of anatomically. Yeah. It's it's yeah. So yeah, but so th- there is now there is now uh, so Tommy Wiseau when it first came out it was a complete flop. Um, but because it grew in cult status and so many people now watch it every year it has probably paid itself back many times over and Tommy Wiseau is now claiming that it was always a, meant to be like this it was meant to be a comedy clearly not but he's managed to create a lot of business wealth from it well, The Princess Bride was like that oh, I love not? The Princess Bride The Princess Bride was a flop when it came out it went straight to VHS didn't it um, and that's a cult. I was talking about this yesterday to someone. That's like a cult classic now. The Princess Bride. The Princess Bride is a brilliant. It doesn't film. sound as badly made as the Room. No, the Room. The Room is the Room. Is but, the, but it is bad, and it's got the, the Princess Bride's brilliant. The pr- The Princess Bride is a classic adventure story. As you wish. <laughs> that bit's not great. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Um, but the book. The book is even better. So the book. But again, the, the story of it is <clears throat> as interesting as the story itself because the story is that William Goldman, who wrote the script, found this book and uh, and adapted this book. And it's not true. He made it all up. But it's, there, there's, a, there's a fantastic story about and And in the book, there are loads of chapters that he tells you about that, he, that, that he's chopped out. For the sake of bre- brevity, he's taken these chapters as out of the book, <laughs> but they're <laughs> still there. It's it's yeah, yeah, it's bizarre. But the princess, yeah, some, something becoming a cult cl- classic is is very rarely something that's planned. You can't plan something to be that influential. People just grab onto something, or they don't. Yeah. Do you know what surprises me is when you get mainstream actors who end up. They they allow themselves to end up on some shit production or a production where there's parts of it where it's obvious that they don't have the knowledge to be able to act it well or the knowledge to intervene in, in a in a consulting way to the director. I'll give you an example. Of what mm. I mean, yeah, the three five five. Have you seen this shit? I haven't. Don't I've heard watch about it. it. I've heard I have about tried it, yeah. three times to watch yeah. this film. So Jessica Chastain is in mm. it. Who I have a soft spot for. Me and a friend have a soft spot for her, and and he said, "Oh, you're going to Partly, yeah. But also, she's hot. And um, and he said, he said, "Oh, you're going to watch the three five five. I got I got maybe six minutes into it, seven minutes into it, and I turned it off. But that bad? No, no. <clears throat> Diane Kruger's in it as well. What She's a it? fox too, right? Yeah. Tried a second time to carry on watching it. What was it that the the the, the break in the the breaking point for me the third time, <laughs> if it was that far in, was so it's all about spies and secret yeah. agents and all this. Jessica Chastain is chasing Diane Kruger through this alleyway lots of people there I don't know where it is Italy or France there's people there drinking and having coffee and shit like that they're going through there I think she's on a motorbike right 
she got a pistol in her hand something like that or maybe running I don't know she's running she's mm. running pistol in her hand and she to try and in, to try and uh, put a, a stop to Dan Kruger's uh, speed of fleeing Jessica Chastain looks up spots a large light hanging because it's, it's roofed right spots a large light hanging from yeah. the roof mm. and as she's running takes a pistol and shoots the wire that is holding the light and the light falls yeah it was that was probably no i can't mm. i can't do this anymore yeah. before that there was loads of stuff mm. but it's all military or tactical or firearm or that kind of or fighting mm. orientated jessica chastain diane kruger are seasoned seasoned actors mm. if i'd like to think if that was me right you wouldn't look as good I wouldn't look as good, right? If it was me, I'd like to think they well can't that have been be sent. They can't have been an advisor on set. They there might can't have been. No, they might have been. Probably won't because maybe yeah. it's a short, a short scene. But I would like to think. Mm. Hmm. Can we just check this? So is this in, correct? In my experience, what can happen? Even is, the way they were holding the firearms and using them was just terrible. So the, it, this can go a few ways. As you've already experienced, you get onto set and the director says, "Actually, I want you to do something different." And you said, and you know, it's it's different from. It's always to the standard you, you wouldn't expect it to be. So yeah. what these 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 issues <clears throat> can start right at the script stage, because the people that write scripts are not necessarily um, not necessarily experts in a particular field. <coughs> so um, the, the the script may have been written by one individual. It may have been written by a number of individuals. It may have been written by somebody chopped up and changed. How something gets from written on the page to being filmed with a studio film because that was was that Netflix. Yeah, there's a load of um, there's a load of processes and people that will go through first, and people add stuff, change stuff. When it comes to when it comes to things like how accurate a handgun is and at what range and whether or not you can shoot a wire. A lot of people have grown up on films where they've seen that happen, so they think that can happen. So you see a lot of... If you look at the tropes that come in from films... Our you, generation, maybe, yeah. You see, yeah. you see them picking up these ideas from films. There's, no, there's nothing new. People are taking influences from, from other stories and things. So people have seen things from the 80s and the 90s that they think are real. The people that did the films in the 80s and 90s have seen things from the 50s and 60s and the cowboy films. And you see these cliches prevail all the way through. And that's when it gets to the writing stage. When it gets to the filming stage, sometimes if you do have an advisor... <coughs> sometimes the advisor doesn't necessarily get to see the script in advance. So they can be presented with the scene on the day and they go, ah, a handgun wouldn't do that. And then they go, like, ah, but it's crucial to the plot because presumably something happens, the light comes down and she gets her. It hits or, her, it hits her. It hits, it hits her, her, yeah, yeah hits exactly. Her. So they're like, okay. So the timing was also impeccable. Yeah. <laughs> so... Physics and maths, this is that, that wait for it. Not yet, no. So presumably somebody's, somebody on set may have said, that's not very realistic. And they went, right, but we're filming this scene right now. So unless you've got another solution... The problem is... That we can do the this. The thing is yeah. full of these things. Yeah. In the first... Yeah. Well, I assume I must have got the 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. I get it. I, 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 I understand I that. I understand but that. In, but when, in general, I'm talking about in general, not specifically about that film. But that kind of film mm. is a... Thriller, spy, action. It's mm. a Jason Bourne kind of genre, yeah. is what it is. And they need to be accurate in that regard, because it makes us inauthentic. You look at Bourne, mm. you don't see Bourne doing crazy shit like that. No. You see, I, and look how far, how long, how, how far in the past Bourne was. Bourne's an mm. old film now. You, you see, there's yeah. some, there is some bad shit crazy stuff, yeah. right? But it's not mental. It's not totally outside the realm. And of the, if they are in there, there are only a couple of them. Yeah. No. It, it it happens, and it, it is it, it again. It, it comes do down need to the it sometimes. comes it comes down to the executives and whoever's in control. Because sometimes it can be the executives, sometimes it can be the director. It depends who's got the, the creative control to say 
that's daft we don't want that or we do want that and here's why or regardless it looks cool we'll have it my favorite one that seems to survive the ages mm. is snipers or anyone mm. shooting from a helicopter yes and hitting things <laughs> in yes. the first shot yeah maybe a headshot yeah no not at me yeah. ever in a month of sunday yeah. <laughs> They were not yeah. even on the calmest day is that happening. Yeah. And it happens I did, all the I, time. I did meet a Go man for drama, though. who had the coolest job I've I've heard of. He was he was an anti poaching sniper. And okay. they would literally mm. suspend him in a cargo net from the bottom of a helicopter. And that's that that was his platform. Rather than being Is this real? Yeah. What? Yeah. Young man uh, young man who applied to join the army. When I was uh, working at the army office uh, selection board. Oh, he told yeah. you that's what he did. Well, I presume he that's was, a lie. No, I know he was. He, he, he was on, an impressive Bax. individual. But. Uh, yeah, well, hang on. He told you he used to get. He he was a human underslung load in oh, a helicopter not with a weapon. Not necessarily underslung on like a huge. He said hanging from a helicopter. I think he was like hung like directly under it, like between the rotors in a not the rotors between the skids in a hammock. Okay, he wasn't it. Anything. Hey, <laughs> it may be Regard- the case. Reg- regardless, <laughs> that's a fucking cool job. Um, but no, the, the, these 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 myths about things and how things work. My my biggest, most annoying thing is people cocking weapons. When if you picture the scene, copying them, cocking, cocking, weapons. cocking. So yeah, picture yeah, yeah. the scene. If only I had a gun here, I could show no. you. Picture the scene. You have you have the hero creeping up behind the baddie or somebody. Yeah. How do they let them know that they're pointing a gun at them? Cock the weapon. They cock the gun. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Even if it's a gun that you can't pull the hammer back on, so that's just a Glock. <sighs> somebody will put the cocking sound in. So as soon as they raise the gun, <laughs> even though they're not doing anything. A small one. A small one. It, it grips my shit because it's insane. But yeah. any films. Or they, saw... cock the gu- or they cock the weapon repeatedly yes, in, exactly. in, in the same scene. Exactly that. Um, there was one the other day that I almost applauded and somebody <sighs> walks up behind somebody and says... I'm pointing a gun at you. And I was like, yes! <laughs> and in John Wick, in John Wick, he walks up, just before the club scene, there's the big bodyguard outside. He walks up behind and just touches him with the gun. And you're like, ah, very good. There's none of this. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. John Wick, I've a lot of time. I have a lot of time for John Wick 1. Mm. I've not really watched the others. I don't think I have one. I remember no, watching the I've second watched, one. I've watched the second one. I've watched the third one once. I've watched the first one. That I've watched the club scene probably a couple of hundred times because mm. we use that for teaching. We use that for teaching students uh, who are actors. Like, how do you put together an effective action sequence with guns and do it safely and well? And sort of try and so that's one side of it. And the other side of it is all the different techniques that John Wick uses in that scene, all the different stances he uses. So he's 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 using about five or six different techniques at various <clears> points, <throat> different weapons, different distances, and um, so teach them about how to hold a pistol correctly. So John Wick holds a pistol very correctly, whereas, again, one of the things that pervaded through time is the old teacup, which is where you have the hand underneath which doesn't really do anything mm. whereas the modern technique is to have the two hands secured together so things like that um and um when he's moving through the club keeping the gun close to his his hip mm-hmm. and that's so that and you see it later on one of the baddies comes around the corner with hands outstretched John Wick grabs him and takes him down. It's it's making yourself as small as possible, not telegraphing when you're going to come out around a corner, um, protecting the weapon as well so somebody can't take it away. So all of these things, using a, u- using it one-handed when you need to, using your dominant hand to control somebody or to con- or to move something. There's a, it, there's a lot of techniques packed into a very short scene. Mm, I wonder but, how, I wonder how long it took to film that whole sequence. Days must have been. De- must have days, been days. days, yeah. Day. There's a lot of martial arts in there as well. Yeah. There's there's uh, a lot of stunts as well. Yeah, I, I imagine at least a week. Does he do all his own stunts? Or probably um, most. He certainly used to. I don't think... He does all of his, his own fighting. He's a very good fighter since the Matrix days. 
Um, one of my favorite stories about the Met the Matrix is they um, they um, hired a famous Hong Kong martial artist who did all the Hong Kong Hong Kong action films in the eighties and the nineties, and sort of coaxed him to come and do the Met the Matrix. And um, the rumor is that he didn't want to do it, so he said, "I want to be paid this," and named an outrageous fee, and said, "And I want." you know, four months training with the cast. I don't know if it was four months, but a very long period of time training with the cast <coughs> beforehand, knowing that they would say no. Uh, and they said yes. <laughs> so, really? Well, yeah. the Wachowski, the Wachowski yeah. brothers. Yeah. Um, and this, so, is the, this is for the Matrix, the first Matrix. Yeah. 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 What a film. Yeah. What a film. Great film. So, um, so uh, yeah, he got what he wanted and Kiorani Reeves learned all the, the martial arts that he does in the film through that guy and all the fighting's done by him. So there's there's a difference between fighting stunts and sort of stunts like a fall off of something. So if it would be a fall, I'm sure he's got a stunt double to do that. Um, and the director of the John Wick films is an ex-stuntman. So um, uh, oh. Chad Stahel Stahelski. Um, he was actually Brandon Lee's stunt double. Um, and Brandon Lee died, Bruce Lee's son, Brandon Lee died filming The Crow. Crow. Yeah, and Chad Stahelski's, um, the few scenes that they hadn't completed, Chad, Chad Stahelski did, yeah, oh, to wow. complete the film. Um, wow. How do you think, uh, how do you <clears throat> think um, AI combined with CGI is going to change the way films are filmed? Do you think actors are going to be missing out on uh, jobs in the future? I don't know. I was listening so there's a lot of stuff happening the, the industry is going through a huge amount of change at the moment um there's a guy called tyler perry who is why do i know that name he did a lot of films in the early noughties where he was he's yeah he's 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 quite tall black actor i think he's i think he's probably about six or three name a film he's been and in. maybe taller i haven't seen anything he's been in but he's like he's done a i lot know of the films. names yeah tyler perry um he did he did films that were very popular in the states where he was in drag playing an old black lady i think i could have gone this completely wrong like a, a, a mrs doubtfire type yeah. scenario like i think it's called madama or something along those lines yeah they never really made it over here but he he um now runs his own studio in in atlanta which has been expanding over the last few years in the boom in TV. He has now put his expansion on hold and he says it's because of AI. So he has apparently been shown, this was in an article a few days ago, he's been shown what the new version of AI can do and it can create any environment Wild. that you want. And you can, so you don't have to film in the, the mountains, you don't have to film anything, you can just film and it'll create the background for you. You don't even have to do green screen. Um, apparently, I, I, I don't know about the tech that he's talking about, but it's spooked him enough, apparently, to put a hold on the expansion of his um, studio. So it's definitely going to have an effect. The ways I, the ways I can see it having a, having a big effect are, so talking about earlier about the scene you did in the airport where you needed 200 extras for that. That will that will be AI done yeah. because it's in the background rather than paying. I mean, two hundred extras for the day, roughly speaking, costs you about. It was a week, mate. It wasn't a day. It was a week. So let's Five let's do let's do the quick maths. This is going to require us to take off our socks and shoes. Extra, say let's say <laughs> seventy. Let's say hundred quid a day. Uh, yeah, hundred quid a day. It'd probably end up being two hundred quid a day, but somewhere between 100, 100 and two hundred. Um, let's call it one hundred and fifty. Five days. That is seven hundred and fifty pounds per person. Then you're talking two hundred of them. So that is fifteen grand. Fifteen grand. Yeah. Is it? Is on a No, no, no. And the rest. Hundred no. Fifteen hundred, three thousand. This is a reg math. <laughs> Woo! Hold on. How three thousand seven hundred and fifty. Three thousand seven hundred and fifty times two hundred. 
No. no. <laughs> Start again. Right. Right. What is one Seven, person for five days? One person for five days, £750. Right, so if you're talking... Times 200. Times 200. Right. Hold on. £750. Add two noughts onto that. That is 75... Seven, 750. 7,500. 75,000. We can, we can edit all the stuff out we did beforehand. No. Right, get your phone. Hang out. on, one hundred and fifty pound, seven hundred fifty pound for one person. Yeah, for a week. So that's almost a grand. Right, we want twenty of them. Yeah, right. No, so two hundred of them. Uh, two hundred of them. Yeah, so seven hundred fifty pounds. So yeah. seven and a half grand. One hundred and fifty grand is about fifteen right. grand. No, hundred. Because think about it. Like, so if it were a grand, if it were a grand per people person, people are pulling their fucking if hair. It, out if now. it were a grand, we can edit all of. Can I just say? So this is difficult right to do answer. when we're talking to each other and knowing that people are listening. We're under pressure. <laughs> we'll cut right? this bit out. Right. So if you're talking a grand each, seven. And there's two hundred people. That's two hundred grand. Seven fifty per, per per person for a yeah. week, and it's two hundred times two hundred. Fuck's sake! Yeah, hundred fifty thousand. Hundred fifty grand. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just cut out all of that bit <laughs> and we just get to the answer so hold on yeah let me say it though start again. right bags is 150 grand there you go I, I got think, it cut I think around. you're right yeah cool 150 grand. <laughs> so 150 grand for that that's just the piece then if you think about um, the food yeah, that's yeah, yeah, going to cost yeah. them um, think about the, um, the the costume everything mm. that they're wearing so well that, we've established the cost saving yeah it's it's a lot of a lot yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of cash yeah so um so, so, a, so AI can, can, can now do anything in the background pretty easily. So those are the people who are going to instantly lose out. I think we're a way off, way, way off actors being replaced. Because I don't think you're at a position now, or may, it won't be for the next mm. five years maybe, where you could convincingly have two AI actors on screen. They may look human, mm. they may talk human, but the interaction will not be human. There'll be things there, there'll be little nuances, they will look... There'll be something that is not human yeah, about it. I don't I think you're more likely to see AI used um post production. Let, let's yeah, let's say an actor isn't available for a particular scene. So you use AI to stitch them into a scene. So mm. there there's films where they've had to replace actors. Mm. And some films so there was a film called All the Money in the World, which was about John Paul Getty um and his son who was kidnapped which is a true story. Um, and it was, Kevin Spacey was playing John Paul Getty. They got within, <clears throat> I think within about 10 days of completing the film and all of the stuff about Kevin Spacey came out. And I can't remember who the director was. Um, famous director decided he would rather reshoot. I think it was Ridley Scott decided he'd rather reshoot the whole thing. So they reshot the entire. They reshot all all of his scenes, which was which was a large chunk of the film, mm. um, with um, Christopher Plummer, who's now sadly died. Uh, so that's that would. And but then you have um, there was Army of the Dead. Did you ever see that one? It was the, it's about Las Vegas and breaking into a casino surrounded by zombies. No, not so. Um, I'm not a massive zombie film fan. No, this it's a Zack Snyder one. Um, but they had a character in that. They had an actor again, part of the Me Too campaign. Um, he had some allegations made about him, so they decided to replace him. Smollett. I can't remember. Smollett, who it was. Just, Jesse <laughs> Smollett. I can't remember who it was, but they replaced him entirely with an actor called Tignataro. Um, oh, Smollett wasn't part of the Me Too movement, was he? No, he was. He was the one who Black Lives Matter. He was the one who tried to claim he was beaten up. Racially targeted. And it he may had, or may not have been true. Well, it wasn't true, was it? He I'm, hired, I'm saying no, legally. No, no, legally, no, no it, got, yeah. it, got found, it, was, it got found out last year. Yeah. yeah it's last year. <clears throat> so I, that it'll be... <laughs> Why it'll, don't you want to make allegations, Max? Because <laughs> the alligators. <laughs> uh, no, I think, um, I think it'll be easier to do things like that. But if... It depends on the type of film. If you're if you're doing a film that is all about the performances of the two actors, then <clears throat> replacing people or putting people in or stitching them in is never going to work for the actors because they're going to be performing opposite somebody. And that's almost impossible to do if they're not there. Um, whereas if you're doing an action film, it's less of a problem. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because the actors have their own process and if it's mm. if it's you know not to not to talk down about particular types of acting but there are certain films that are more more act more acting heavy 
requiring a big performance rather than blowing up stuff. Who do you think is the most is the most successful shit actor? <laughs> um, well, that's difficult because then I'd have to say who I think is a shit actor, which is not fair because... Um, who do you think is the most successful shit actor who is dead? <laughs> <laughs> Well, John, because we, sorry, John Wayne, John Wayne. I thought you were going to say John Wick. There, I was like, no, John, no, John to, Wick's a character. John, John Wayne. John Wayne. I know John Wick's a character. I think Keanu John, Reeves. Go John on. Wayne wasn't wasn't a particularly great actor, um, from what I know. Was anyone but, back in those days? Was anyone? Oh yeah, there's some really classics. Like there is, there are some brilliant. I films. mean, when was the John Wayne films? They were forties, fifties, sixties, or fifties, sixties, really? Fifties, sixties, fifties, sixties. I think. Yeah, I've never seen any of them. I can recall. Yeah. Um, so John Wayne was shit. Uh, no, I'm not saying he was shit, but I'm saying he was very successful, but wouldn't necessarily be classed as a great actor. The thing, yeah, the thing mm. is that I, I don't want to insinuate. And he's very dead. He's I been don't, dead for a long time. Dead. So I don't I'm want safe the, in terms Yeah, of I don't being, want to insinuate that yeah. successful bad actors are not talented because mm. John Wayne's a good example, actually incredibly talented a lot of charisma mm. knew exactly what he knew exactly what sold arguably well that's it um, that's knew what I'm how saying. to play his character I don't think he was really a, well. a bad actor I think he was playing to type playing what he was required to do look at yeah. Schwarzenegger yeah I'd argue that Schwarzenegger is not a world class actor now he can act better than I can for sure but he's not <laughs> he's not a Brad Pitt level he's not he's a, not dead he's, and he's he, very big he's so. not DiCaprio level you know no. but again like John Wayne he he there's there's things about him mm. extremely talented yeah and he made it in the TV Sylvester Stallone Dolph Lundgren I mean you're, he, just, you're just thinking naming, of the bodybuilders you're naming, <laughs> you're naming all the people from the Expendables That's well basically. I'm just thinking why am I naming those people actually mm. because but th those people would never cast they they were cast for their look, they were cast for how they looked, not necessarily how they acted. There yeah. are di there are yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. There are different. So yeah. the Terminator required him to be very still, very non-feeling, and and then arguably he did that exceptionally well. Is Schwarzenegger a shit actor? Thinking I, about it, I may be wrong there. You know? Yeah. Well, it, it depends because not you. If you get an actor, they are not going to be able to play every single part. Well, yeah, so was he a bad actor? Or was he just typecast and never had an opportunity to show off how good he was in other roles? Everything he did was all action-oriented. He he's not bad at comedy. He did some good comedy stuff Yeah, he as did well. do good comedy stuff. Jingle All The Way is a, is, is a classic. Have you seen... Kindergarten Have Cop? you ever watched the documentary about bodybuilding? Um... Uh, um, the pump or something like that is it oh yeah pump um, oh. I've heard of it I've not watched it talk about unintentional comedies Max <laughs> what is it called pump pump feel the pump not there's, the there, pump. there's a quote about him coming interview yeah. with him coming yeah. he feels like coming when he gets the pump yeah. um, what is it called I don't know anyway that is I've watched that several times not because of that scene but it is, sure. it's filming the contestants, the, the bodybuilders who are going for the... Mr. Who, to compete. No, it's Mr. Olympia. And Mr. Olympia. It's Mr. Olympia. Yeah. It focuses on Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. It focuses on Lou, Lou Ferrino yeah. and their rivalry. Lou mm. Ferrino's up and coming. Lou Ferrino is actually bigger. Mm. He's bigger than Schwarzenegger. He is mm. a unit. He's bigger than Schwarzenegger. He should, by all accounts, win. But... Schwarzenegger is just Schwarzenegger. It shows the mind games. It shows the way he is. It shows yeah, the way really? they are. But it also focuses on other bodybuilders and the industry mm. as a whole. It is an. It's a proper good insight. Also, yeah. also unintentional comedy. It's in <laughs> Gold's Gym back in the day, and it is camp as fuck. Proper <laughs> camp. Proper camp. You should uh, definitely give that a look. I mean, um, but no. I would, when it comes to acting, I, I think I think a good performance is subjective. You can't. There are, and plus, not you. It's the actor's range. It's what range have they got about being able to portray different types of people? So Gary Oldman 
Tyler Perry, yeah. Tyler Perry, sorry. Yeah. The internet's so slow in here. That's, well, the, oh, the, the, the connection sound. Yeah. yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. 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 Um, the range of an actor, so the different kinds of roles they can play. You're saying Schwarzenegger's typecast. That's mainly because of his size. Um, but <laughs> you, have, um, you have actors who can portray a huge range of people. <clears throat> Gary Oldman, Slow Horses. Favorite actor of all time. Amazing actor, but if you look at the look at the, the the types of people he's played, it's everything from baddies in Leon, where he's an absolute psychopath. You've got his character in Leon. Yeah. You've got psychopath in um, True Romance. Yes. Oh, Those God, two yeah. characters. Yeah. Are, even though they're both baddies, wildly yeah. different from each other. You've got Commissioner Gordon Commissioner from the Gordon. Batman films. You've got Slow Horses. You've got Tinker Taylor. You know, his his range is phenomenal. Fifth Element. Fifth Element, yeah. Zorg. You know, you like... Zorg. Um, he played Churchill as well. Churchill. Churchill. Like, one person being able Pumping to... Pumping Iron. That's what it's called. Pumping, Pumping iron. iron. There we go. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, go on. Um, <laughs> one person being able to play all of those people. That's a huge range. But there may be people who are better at playing one type. So if you asked him to play a robot, he may not be good at that. Yeah. For instance. Do you know I met the other day? Have I told, have I told you this I met the other day? Randomly in the street. Paddy Considine. Oh, yeah. Did I tell you this? I did, didn't I? Did I tell you this? Did you? I'm sure I, I texted you. Did, yeah. I would have excitedly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have excitedly texted yeah. you. We're walking through Shoreditch, walking down, and I, I, uh, I did the old fan thing. Holy fuck, can I shake your hand? He was talking to another guy. Yeah. Completely interrupted. I feel guilty. Completely interrupted. So, Paddy, if you're listening. Completely ignored <laughs> the other guy. I meant to say, so I should say, sorry for Was the other guy Tyler like, Perry? I said something like, I love Can I shake your hand? Shoots. No, I love your acting. Love your music. I don't love his music. It's not what I listen to. Does he do music? Yeah, he's got a band. Does he? I didn't yeah, know yeah he's got a band, mate. Yeah. yeah. And he was just, he was, he was a dude. Yeah. But it just made me think in there in terms of range of, mm. range of different, he's got a good range. Pride. Um, wasn't he in. Um, so Dead Man Shoes. Hot Fuzz. Hot Dead Fuzz. Man Shoes. Hot Fuzz. He's, he, he is my <laughs> favourite thing about Hot Fuzz. <laughs> He, him, him as as one of the Andes. Oh my God! Yeah, you I've, dropped, a I've dropped him a line. I've dropped him a message to the band Instagram Everyone page. Got the times to get him on the podcast. But, yeah. Well, not now because he said you don't like his tunes. I know, but I won't tell him that. We can cut that bit out. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, and I've got a couple of loose what connections. What do you think of Penny Considine's music? It's great. I mean, it's exactly what I listen to. <clears throat> we'll cut that in. Is my inspiration for um, donating five million pounds to the homeless children in Africa. You, where did you get five million from? <laughs> Don't make a shit up, mate. You tell me that. Uh, yeah, party concert. Mm. No, but, I, but so so, what makes a good actor is is there's no one thing because you have people like Andy Serkis, who's an amazing physical performer, who. who? So Andy Serkis, who played Gollum. What? I'm just laughing at like Gollum. Yeah. I'm laughing out of the kind of man who would play Gollum. What does he look like? Andy Serkis. Um, he's is there any is there any resemblance? Resemblance. So when Gollum's human, um, I can't remember. Don't the avoid name. the question. No. Right. When Gollum is human, and I can't remember what uh, Schmeagol. When Gollum is Schmeagol. 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 When Gollum is Smeagol as a human, not even as a human, I think he's a hobbit, um, <laughs> that's him. That's Andy Serkis playing Schmeagol. Right. So Andy Serkis was, was a very good actor beforehand, very good character actor. Um, he uh, did the motion capture for Gollum, and then he became a specialist in that area. So he did all the motion capture for Planet of the Apes, he did the motion. He was Captain Haddock in the Tintin film. <laughs> yeah. So he's so he's very 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 good at that. Do you know also who surprised me? Successful actors mm. who manage to do this exact same mannerisms from film to film, but get away with it, mm. and, and uh, uh, it's like becomes a core part of their identity on screen. Like Denzel Washington, he does this, doesn't he? With his mouth does this. Weird mouth thing. <laughs> you ever noticed it? When you see it, you can't yeah. unsee it. And you've got this stuff. Kevin's a brilliant actor as well. God, brilliant. Kevin Spacey as well. Mm. Talk about different. Uh, oh, what? What are you putting that? Mate, he got. He got. He got cleared in the UK courts as yep. being not guilty. Yep. 
I don't know. Not guilty courts. doesn't mean you're innocent. The UK yeah. courts not, not guilty. guilty. Um, Kevin Spacey, he do, he does stuff. There's a guy in. There's a black guy who he's in Tenet, and a Tenet was just. Do you, that's Denzel Washington's son. No. Yes. No. Yes. Is it really? Yes. Because he's got weird mannerisms too yeah. that go from film to film. Yeah. He's done two or three big ones now. Yeah. I feel like Tenet was like his big break. Mm. Is that Wash- Denzel Washington's son? Yeah. Wow. I have not been able mm. to get a handle on Tenet in three times of watching it. The first two times, admittedly, I was mm. drunk. The third time, I was completely sober. Mm. And I almost had it at the end of the third film. <laughs> I almost had it, and then I lost it. And I decided I'd never watch it again. So I've, I've watched it one and a half times. <laughs> the, the, the first time, I'm, I'm a big Nolan fan. Um, first time went to see it when it came out in lockdown. And I couldn't hear anything that was happening. What do you mean? The sound in the theatre... Was, and this was a common problem. A lot of people. I think that's a problem with that film. Yes, a lot. A lot of people. It's have not said just the same the cinema; thing. it's a home as well. Yeah, a yeah. lot of people have said that. And the background um, music and noise is really high compared to the, um, yeah. the voices. And, right? and apparently, it's deliberate. Apparently oh, it's really? Deliberate to add to the confu- confu- fusion. I don't know, but it made that it old very- chestnut. <laughs> yeah, deliberate. That, that's deliberate. <laughs> well, apparently, apparently, that's deliberate. It would. It would be insane for that level of money to be spent on something and somebody not to go, um, you'd be able to change we, it. Can we you? change the sound a bit? I can't hear it. I'm, it's got to have been deliberate. Anyway, first time through, I couldn't really understand what was happening. And it was almost like the, the speed at which everything was going was too <clears throat> fast to comprehend it as you were watching it. Um, I might just be thick, but I, <laughs> I genuinely struggled with it and got to the point about halfway through, I thought, I'm just going to have to watch this. I can't, I, I can't sit here and work it out as I go because I need to, I need to pause it. So just go, hold on a second, what just happened and talk it through. I, well, I understand mm. the film. Yeah. What I'm, what I, what I'm, is breaking me. I'm trying to understand mm. when they're, how they're doing, they're seeing themselves, like when they're going backwards in time, mm. they, or they're going backwards while someone else in the same reality is going forwards. Yes. It, fucking crazy. That's trying, it. But the, I think the problem is I'm trying to bend my mind around something that doesn't is not real. They've made no. it up for film. So it's yes. not going to make sense and won't ever. But the, there, are two, there are two ways, I think, to watch that film. <laughs> Number one is to try and understand the science behind it and what's happening and how somebody can have a backwards fight with themselves going forwards and how that makes sense with the transfer of that energy. Have they already been punched if you're going backwards? Yeah. Like, yeah. are they already injured at the start of the fight, at the end of the fight? I feel like yeah. it's the one film I wouldn't risk watching on acid. I don't it think probably, I'd recover. It would probably make more sense. I don't know. But right. then that's one way to watch it. But then the other way is just to let it wash over you and just enjoy the experience. It is a good film. Um, it's got some amazing action sequences. Because even though you don't understand what the fuck is going on with time, mm. it still manages to build suspense. That's it, yeah. Which yeah. is really... Uh, and there's some great actors in that, actually. Who's I was, Robert Pattinson, I was really impressed, but I thought he was the best bit about that film. He's the, he's the guy who plays his mate, the English guy, mm. who I'd only ever seen... He's growing on me. I'd only ever seen him in like a brief clip of Twilight. I yeah. accidentally watched he did Batman 30 well. seconds of Twilight. Batman's super dark. Yeah, like Batman and, super yeah dark. Batman, Batman, he's great in it. Um, he, he looks, he looks like somebody who's been up all night fighting. He looks mm. terrible. Um, but no, he, he's, he was the best bit about that film. I, think. I, wanna, I, I always, sometimes, I was gonna say always, sometimes I end up pairing up actors in my head like they're competitors at the time. And I, I used, I paired up a long time ago, Matt Damon and DiCaprio, just subcon- uh, unconsciously. Mm. Matt Damon and DiCaprio, same kind of people, moving in the same direction. But I feel like DiCaprio smashed it. I'm not a fan of Matt Damon anymore. He was good in Born, he shit in mm. everything else, I think. Have you the, seen The Martian? Yeah, I use all right okay. in that, but I, I added this like from when I watched that. I just think he's, with it. I just don't like him acting, right? But, and then the other pair I have at the minute paired up is Jake Gyllenhaal. Mm. And Robert Pattinson. I think they're really similar. Similar look, similar age, similar in career stages. 
And I, I feel like one of them is going to have a Matt Damon career where they sort of plateau on average movies and the other one's going to go stellar. And I can't figure out which one it is because they're both brilliant. Interesting. I, I, I see what you mean about them competing because this will this will frequently happen when when films are being cast. Maybe they're not competing. I see no, them as might, com- yeah, no, but they, in the but same they, sphere. But they they probably they might be going up for the same parts. I think Rob Schwarzenegger is a bit Stallone. younger. Short no, no. Sloan famously had a. Mm. There was one of my favourite stories about them. Is have you seen the film Stop or My Mum Will Shoot? No, I heard of it though. <laughs> Sylvester <laughs> Sloan. Sylvester Sloan, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sylvester Sloan buddy mm. cop film, but the buddy he's with is his mother, right. and it, it's apparently the the only reason why he did the film because because Schwarzenegger and him were competing a lot mm. in the eighties. The only reason why he did the film was because he thought Schwarzenegger wanted to do the film. So he said yes beforehand. And Schwarzenegger had set the whole thing up as a joke. No. Yeah. And had, had pretended that he wanted to do the film so that Sylvester Sloan would do it. Apparently you, if you watch true. Pumping Iron, yeah. which is in the 70s, yeah. you that see that sense. about Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see it about him. Yeah. And it, I think I also read it about it in something else. Before I watched that film, it was a, it was a documentary or something about, again, about the bodybuilding and that he's a mind gamer. Yeah. He, he will try and defeat you with his mind. And that's what he does to Lou Ferrino mm. in, in Pumping Iron. He, he, yeah. Part of it is he's, yeah. he's trying to make him feel inferior. Yeah. The thing is, Lou Ferrino already feels inferior. You can see yeah. it. He's younger. Still, uh, uh, Schwarzenegger's this like just this hero phenom, yeah. Yeah. phenom, and but you also see the way Schwarzenegger speaks to him and treats him, yeah. it, like completely proper undermines him. Really? It's like passive aggressive, passive aggressive. Yeah, you know. I wonder if that led him to politics. Maybe, maybe that's sort of, that fuck. sort of brain, I mean, brain goes. super intelligent guy, mm. tactician, strategist. Yeah. You know, understands the psyche, understands them in, how to manipulate people. Mm. Interesting. You know. um, female pairs. Mm. Female pairs. Let's think about so, that. so Jessica Chastain, who you mentioned, um, what? There's another actress that looks exactly like her. Is on the um, same path. I think it's harder with females because there's but less. They, but even people have mistaken them for each other. It is. Um, really? What's her name? Who, there was the guy, uh, Ron Howard's daughter, Bryce Dallas Howard. Who the heck is that? Bryce Dallas Howard, she was in all, you probably think it's Jessica Chastain. She was in all the Jurassic Park films. She's the Jurassic Park films, one with Chris Pratt. She's the other I can't think you're on about. She looks like Jessica Chastain. Okay. Yeah, they frequently get mistaken for each other all the time. Uh, Do you know who had no rival? Sigourney Weaver. She was she, my was, God. she is brilliant. I introduced my eldest to the Alien so films good. recently. Brilliant. And Fantastic. And I watched it thinking, do you know what I liked about those films? Mm. It's like, back in those days, it's, women, women were project, particularly ob- objectified, mm. particularly sexualized, and yeah. a bunch of different things, including mm. the film. And I watched, uh, I watched, rewatched Alien with my eldest, like almost with a critical eye. Mm. And I think, and she, like, she was the first female ac- action actress right the first female mm-hmm. action actor i think i think that's the first big female action role or action role that was handed to a female i mm. think i may be wrong I, maybe think, other I think it was definitely groundbreaking at the time but what's Fucking interesting nailed it is, as well. is nailed the, part, the part of ripley was originally written without any comment about whether it was a man or a lady oh, I so the original that. script for alien ripley wasn't really wasn't yeah why did they cast a woman? Um, I, there's, there's a lot of documentaries about Alien and, and how it was made and why Ridley Scott chose her. But it's, in, but it's inspired because it sets up Aliens. Because mm. Aliens is all about being about being a mo- mother and protection. And the Alien Queen and her are, are wanting the same thing. They're both protecting their child. Um, I never thought of it that way. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. 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 That, those films are timeless. What, so what good. Alien. What a film. So good. Oh my God. And John Hurt, is it? Yeah. He's John Hurt is a bunch of good actors. In that. Yeah. What a film. Yeah. But no, I think, I think you're right. I think she was one, that was, that was a, that was a real groundbreaking role for a, for a female being, being an action lead. Because it, is Alien an action film? Yeah. Aliens is an action film. Alien. Aliens is like a war film. Alien mm. is more like a horror film. 
Yeah, true. Horror thriller. Horror. 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 Horror, <laughs> horror thriller, maybe. Yeah. yeah, true. It's more like a horror film, isn't mm. it? And then we watched Alien 3. Not as good, but no. very confusing. No. Yeah. Uh, but it's still entertaining. It's David Fincher, so it's very dark and quite weird. Yeah, still entertaining. It was yeah. weird. Still entertaining. Um, and then... What was the one I watched after that? I didn't watch it. Resurrection? Before. No, we watched Prometheus. I Again, really like Prometheus. It's, it's interesting. It's not as good as Aliens. Or, sorry, it's not as good as the first two. There's a weirdness mm. that Michael Fassbender brings to films. Oh, yeah. That kind of endears me to those films. Have you seen The, th- the Thriller? Uh, sorry, The Killer. Shit. <laughs> Did not enjoy it. I, I did not enjoy it. I went to see it with, with a friend of mine who's ex army now. And it's like my 355 moment for Chastain, yeah. but for Fastbender. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. missed the mark there. Yeah. What did it you was, think of it? I enjoyed bits of it, but overall, I was just like, I don't get it. I watched it all. Yeah, I watched yeah. it all. Yeah. That's, that's, that's something. Yeah. It's better than 355, then. Yeah, I definitely. Well, I, yeah. I haven't watched it all. So, yeah. No, I, I, I enjoyed certain bits of it, but I just, I just didn't see the the point of it it didn't do anything new it wasn't anything it, it, you'd seen seen everything in it done a million times before I feel like it's all about the, him the character mm. uh, the, the whole film is about him and wrestling with his perfection perf- perfect life and uh, being ruined by his own imperfection mm. and him, him trying to recover it and also maintain and there's also a bit of honour and a bit of family in it but, but it didn't really. It was didn't it, really. Just the build character it up of him, I didn't get. Like he kills that young taxi driver, the mm. one that drops off well, the psychopath. assassins at his house. He's like that. Well, he's a psychopath, isn't he? Yeah. There, there were some good bits to it. I did. Enjoy, I really enjoyed the fight um, at the start. No, the no the the fight in the house with the the big guy and the dog. Oh yeah, drugs that, the dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Enjoyed that fight. There's, there's enjoyable bits in it, but I thought it, yeah. And the, the bit where he's preparing to go and meet the lawyer and he's he kills the lawyer and puts him in a barrel. Mm. He's Apparently Fassbender's got a massive schlong. I don't know if... I th- he did a, f- a film called... Sh- is it Shame? The one where he's prancing around naked. I don't know. You've clearly watched... Do you know, oh weirdly, you told me about this, my dad said the same thing. My dad. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, my dad. Um, my dad's never touched me, by the way. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Good. He Good said about it. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know how fast mm. came up. Anyway, yeah, apparently, and I actually went and watched the film that he was on about. Mm. I can't remember what the bloody film was. Anyway, it's there's a film one. where you see Fassbender from behind, yeah. and his schlong is swinging big. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember. Well known for it, apparently. Yeah, I can't. I, I can't remember if that was if that was fake or not. But so yeah, not that's how, that's the rumor. How, that's it's rumor. not how I want to spend the um, last seven minutes of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen? Um, I tell you, a good film, but at mm. a weird start. It's got Willem Dafoe in it. And I can't remember the, the lady's name. It's, Emma Stone. New one? No. Oh. Uh, it's called. Uh, Antichrist. Oh, the Lars von Trier one. The one with the fox. Have you yeah. seen no, that I haven't, film? No, I have But I've heard about oh it. Oh my God. I've heard about the it. The weird thing about it, it starts mm. off, there's a sex scene that starts, yeah. Willem Dafoe and I can't remember the lady's name. She's a famous actress, but uh, what the yeah, fuck is her name? I can't remember. And much. there's a sex scene yeah. at the start. So got, the film got mm. banned in a bunch of places because it's actually them having sex. Or it's two actors having sex that's supposed to be them. Mm. They, 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 you, they, you see the penetration, like, like it was a soft porn film. Yeah, you see it. But the film is a psychological, I call it psychological thriller. Mm. And it's, it's a problem. At the start of the film, there is a bereavement. A, ch- a child yes. a child dies yeah. at the start of the film mm. while they are having sex. That's the yeah. very start of the film. You see the passion like and the child dies, right? Don't look now. Have you ever heard of that film? No. It's 70s Donald Sutherland child drowns while they're having sex in the house ah and then okay it's similar Venice. right yeah. and then but they're both psychiatrists I think mm. and they basically go into a period of mourning 
the female, the woman, the mum is taking it super bad. Mm. They're basically trying to console each other, self help, and, and they decide to go right when they go. They got a cabin in the woods that they go to sometimes. Mm. They go right when they go to the cabin in the woods. We're gonna sort out. You, you like, I think it's him to her. You need to sort yourself out. Yeah. Out of the cabin in the woods, and they retreat to the cabin in the woods, and it just goes. And it everything goes, gets better, and nope, they work through their nope, problems. It goes dark. Yeah. And when it gets to the end, near the end of the film, you find out why it gets so dark and it mm. flashes back to the start of the film where you're watching them having sex yeah. and the and the kid dies mm. and you, there's some, some other information comes to light and you go, fuck! Oh my God! Yeah. Well worth watching. Okay. Yeah. I will wait till I've forgotten everything you've just said and then I'll go back and watch it. Okay. Because I'll about, be waiting for What that. about The Lighthouse? I, lo- I really like that. I really enjoyed that. Again, Robert Pattinson. Oh, he is Pattinson. Yeah, it's Pattinson. And, and Willem Dafoe. Yeah. That is, a, that is a must watch for everyone. I Not really enjoyed it. Actually Very filmed weird. A, actually, they actually spent time on an island off, yeah. off the North Coast, didn't they? Uh, yes, it's f- I filmed somewhere in Canada, I think, or Nova Scotia or somewhere. Yeah, like I that. need to watch it again, really. But yeah, though that's a very interesting film as well. I really enjoyed that. It's very... <laughs> what I, I it's it's interesting seeing films in general what's what people are enjoying watching because a lot of generic films like your Marvel films are not doing well oh really They're really not yeah the last few have, have really bombed um, because people are just bored of them now. It's just, um, they're seeing the same thing again The and thing again. is with streaming, I, it's accelerating mm. people's app, it's accelerating people's need to see and, and watch new things, mm. from TV series to films. Yeah. And I, I feel like it's a major change coming in the way films are going to be that aren't now. Like, are we still going to see the hour to, well, hour and a half to two hour thing? Is that going to survive for much longer? Um, well, it's it's definitely struggling. Cinemas are struggling at the moment um, because people aren't going out to watch them. So it is causing problems. I want to go and watch Dune. Oh, th- Dune there, are, there are big sort of tentpole films yeah. like like your Dunes that people will definitely go and watch. You know it's going to be a cinematic experience. Exactly. Top Gun, things like that. You know, big films. I, I didn't watch Top Gun in the cinema, regrettably. Oh, oh, Maverick, you? you mean? Maverick. Yeah, 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 Maverick. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, it's it was, that's very good. I really enjoyed that, despite the fact it the was, best scene in it. Yeah, is not even action. And uh, no, like, I mean, they're not. It's not an operational mission. It's him doing a training run, and it's the best yeah. scene in that film. Oh yeah, he, my heart is in my mouth when yeah. he's going through the canyons. Yeah, and you know he's training. I, but yeah. also part of it is that you know. Tom Cruise to film that scene is actually in the plane. He's yeah. not flying, he's in the back yeah, seat. Yeah, yeah. He's actually in the plane, he's actually pulling those Gs, or maybe not pulling them all. He's pulling the Gs yeah. and he's, it's so good. So well made. I, what One I, of the rare sequels that does as well as the first film. What I, what I, what I appreciate is they waited <clears throat> to do the sequel until a point where the camera technology was good enough they could film in the cockpit. Because if you look at the original hmm. Top Gun, hmm the flying sequences and the filming of them in the cockpit done entirely separately. Yeah. Whereas they, they, they knew that they had to top it. Top gun. So they, they waited for these cameras to be small enough so they could film in the cockpit and it really works. It was, it's so good. Yeah. It's so good, but it, it's good because it's not, it's not pretending to be something. It's not, it is, I mean, the the plot is a plot as old as time. It's there's, there's nothing new there, but it what it does do better than any other. What's called the le- the legacy sequel is it the nods that it gives to the previous film are really subtle. They're not over the top, bashing on your head, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. This is something we've already done, mm. as a lot of legacy sequels do. One of my favourite things is the the love interest in the second one, Penny Benjamin actually is name checked in the first film right at the start no yeah right at the start where they are braced up <clears throat> so him and goose are braced up um in front of the admiral um on the aircraft carrier in his office you know the one where he says you'll be flying cartons of rubber dog shit out of hong kong that scene um he's reading out a list of misdemeanors and one of them is a low fly pass over an admiral's daughter 
and Goose leans across and goes, "Is that Penny Benjamin?" And then uh, gets ripped out. It's the same. It's the same <laughs> one. And there's like <laughs> little tiny that. things. What's that like actress's that? name? I love her. Jennifer Connelly. Jennifer Connelly. Got yeah. a big soft spot for her. Yeah. yeah. Big soft spot for her. Yeah. Um, I think she's probably going back to your competing. I think her and Liv Tyler. Maybe. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Let's carry that. Let's yeah. do this again, mate. I could happily do another podcast about TV and film. Let's do it. Quite happily. Yeah. Like H O is uh H R T V R. H O is have you ever seen? <laughs> With bags. H O is have you ever seen this? You ever might, s- who's that who's that or H O is who's that actor that whose name I can't remember who's yeah. in that thing? H O is Slate Dead <laughs> Actors. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Be a pleasure, we, mate. We could do HR film review, film and TV review. Well, yeah. Have you ever seen? Yeah. H- anyway, okay. we'll do it again. Yeah, we'll do it again. Cool. Pleasure. Uh, how do people follow you? How do people see what you're doing? I don't really put much on social media. Not What's really the website? Social media. Uh, do you w- want to w- give it out? Beararms.co.uk. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> The enthusiasm. Oh, self promotion is nasty. If you could pick any, from finish off, if you could mm. pick any weapon on this wall to keep forever, and all the rest would fuck off, and you'd be, and it would be live. You could fire it. Um, mm. which what one kind of choose? situation are we talking? Zombie survival? No, you just got to choose one for the rest of your life now. Right. Okay. I would go for. I mean, I d- for people watching it, uh, listening, we was going to a do, wall of bags. I do have a couple of SMLEs, short magazine Lee Enfields, which are lovely to fire. Yeah. Um, Come on. Everyone wants a Luger. Oh, what would I go for? One. I would the M the the M fourteen EBR. I've never I've never had a chance to fire that. I'd love huh. to have a go with that. Um, that's basically the love child of a Spaz shotgun. Yeah. And uh, an M one. Grand. <laughs> That's quite cool. Um, the SLR. No, you can only choose one. Oh, okay. That's like that's like asking me to choose between my children. That I don't. Well, have. it's not real. No. You can say anything. You can change your mind. I'd probably go for the uh, that M4 up there with the under, with the M203. Yeah. I go for the M4 as long as I can have the M203 with it. Well, that's two guns. Well, it's on the west same weapon. The modification, yeah, I, suppose, I guess. Yeah. So I get the grenade launcher mm. advantage, and I get the uh, assault rifle. Mm. Not too long, not too short. Multi use. I really, I really need like a scenario. Like, like this is going to be the weapon that you've we'll do got a scenario to, next time. You've got to save the world with. We'll do a scenario next yeah. time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. As always, great to talk to you. You too. Speak to you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>